Hello everyone, my name is John Bussard. I'm an HPE Business Transformation Center Engineer for Ingram Micro. I help support servers, blade systems, storage, as well as networking technology solutions from HPE. In my videos, I like to show you a slide from a popular PowerPoint and then demonstrate to you what it means within a management interface. Today, we're going to continue on our discussion with HPE's Nimble Storage Solutions. And we're going to look at the advanced menu for creating volumes within this environment. We're also going to look at a little bit of snapshotting, and then what this slide is speaking to, which is the quality of services. So the way I usually like to talk about quality of services, let's say a database administrator comes to you and asks for a volume, but you go out and carve out their gigabytes or terabytes that they need. And then at that point, once you present the application, they can actually take their lion's share of the performance on the storage system. You really have nothing to be able to limit them. And that can have an adverse effect on other applications that are running within the environment. But we can look at it in that context. We could also look at it in a chargeback context. What do we do for chargeback uh, for people who want to use volumes within our storage system? Basically, we charge them based on the gigabytes or terabytes that they're using. But we really don't have any mechanism for being able to charge them as far as the performance they're using within the environment. Quality of service will allow us to be able to do that. And it's a free um, solution that comes with uh, Nimble Storage Solutions. It allows you to be able to limit um, a volume based on IOPS or throughput within an environment. So with all that being said, let's explore these management interfaces within the environment. Okay, here we are inside our Nimble environment. So we're gonna go over to the Manage and Data Storage context. Now you can get to the advanced menu in a few different ways. Um, if I select my volume here, I can edit it and I'll get the advanced um, volume creation or a modification menu here. I can also go into the volume then click edit, get that menu up here as well. If I create a new volume, and when in the last video, we've seen how to use this context, but we could also get to this advanced volume creation over here under more options. All right, so let's let's create a new volume. And we'll select our pool or folder. Now, I'm going to put these settings in in the basic context, and I'm going to go to the, the, the more options and show you where that kind of gets filled out. If you don't understand anything that I'm plugging in here or I'm selecting in here, I'd suggest going and looking at my, my basic video on volume creation. Um, and then you'll be able to follow through pretty easily on this. Um, go underneath, we'll select our performance policy. All right, we'll give it some space. We'll select our snapshot schedule or our data protection schedule. We're gonna give it access to this system here. And obviously we should use chat, but I'm just demonstrating something to you, so we'll just select that. Right. And then in the last video I showed you, I just clicked Create and we created a volume. But what we're going to do now is we're going to select the More Options, and now we get the More Advanced menu, so we can see the title. We also get the option to put a description in if we felt like it. There's our Performance Policy, and we can see what application category that Performance Policy is set for. It's the Encryption, as well as the Access, what servers has access to this volume. We can click Next. We can see the space that's been allocated. What's its default pool or group? Right. Is it thinly provisioned or thickly provisioned? Next, we could look at our production. We could see a detailed context for how our snapshot schedule is created, but we also um, have the ability to create a volume correct collection over here as well, or a snapshot schedule over here. Scroll down. We'll click next. Right. Now we're under performance, and we'll tinker with this a little bit later on. We'll just create this volume at this point. All right, so that volume is currently created to this system. So we'll use the Nimble Connection Manager to connect to it. Under Volumes, we'll do a refresh. There's our volume. We'll connect to it. Right, and then we, just like any volume on a Windows system, we'll go over to Disk Management. We'll bring it online. We'll initialize it. 
the formatted out. So, so that's using you know the advanced menus to be able to create a volume in the environment. So we'll, we're going to talk a little bit about snapshotting now, and, and we'll modify this volume a little bit. So let's put a little bit of data on this volume, so we have something to look at. And I'll put some information in this. All right, so let's go back over here to our volume. So certainly, um, this has been added as a part of, a, of a, uh, a snapshot schedule here. So that's the volume collection over here. Right. And if we've seen any snapshots or had created any snapshots, we see them within here. Now we have the ability to create snapshots, and there's a couple different ways we can do that. We can allow the schedule to do it, but if I wanted to do it over here, I could select the volume and then click the camera up here, and that would create a snapshot. Or again, I go into the volume, go up to more actions, and then click, pick a snapshot, and it'll ask for the name. All right, and then again, if we look under data protection, you'll see that snapshot exists. So let's do a couple things with this volume. Let's first um, edit it. All right, why don't we grow its space? And I can click on any one of these items and get to that spot quickly. So why don't we increase the size up to 200 gigs? All right, and we'll click the notes to say it's okay to resize this volume, and so we'll make those edits. All right, and now you can go over into this and do a rescan disk. And we can see we have some additional space. And then, of course, I can go over and extend this volume on out. All right. So let's go inside this volume. And now let's delete our data. Right. Empty out of that out of the recycle bin. All right. Say so now we want to revert to this. So, so I'm usually somebody's overly cautious. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to disconnect from this volume off the window system. And then I'm going to go under data protection, select my snapshot, and I'm going to click restore. It's also going to make me set the volume offline here as well. So we'll set it offline. I'll click OK. Right, go over to more actions. We'll bring that back online. And we'll go inside our window system and we'll reconnect to that volume. And you can see our volume is present over here. Again, we're back at 100 gigabytes. And if we go inside that folder, that drive, we can see our data is here again. All right, the next thing I'm going to show you is the quality of service capabilities. Um, I could run, uh, I'm going to use Iometer. Um, if you haven't used Iometer, it's it's a utility that people use to be able to uh, benchmark solutions or run a workload on a storage solution. Um, it's used in a lot of places. It's a little bit older, but but I happen to like it. Um, I could run it against this volume, but it'll run easier and quicker if I go back and I delete this volume. So we're going to get rid of this. Right. And we're going to open up Iometer. And I don't want to make you necessarily an excellent expert on Iometer, but just so you have a little idea, here I'm going to run these 12 workers against this nimble volume. I'm going to do 100 outstanding IOs on it. And then I have to come at that volume in a certain way. So I've got this Our Demo Access Specifications. And if I go down to that over here and I click Edit, you'll see that I'm doing 20% sequential, 80% random, 20% write, 80% read. Right, so I'm going to run that workload. Click this little green flag to start that workload. Click Save. And right now it's not updating at all. So what we're going to do is over there we're going to update the information every second. 
And instead of doing an average, we want to see the number as it kind of rolls away. So, so this is the IOPS that I'm getting, and this is the throughput that I'm getting right now. So we're going to be interested in this area right here. So let's go into our volume. And let's edit it. Again, we're in the advanced context. This time I'm going to go over to performance. First thing I'm going to do is we're going to set the throughput limit. Maybe we'll do 200 megs. And obviously, this is going to have an effect on IOPS as well. Oh, there we go. We saved. You can see it's been saved successfully. Now, if we go back into our Windows system, we can see that we're getting about 200 megs worth of throughput here. All right. Now we'll go back and we'll modify this again. So edit this. Again, we'll go over to performance. This time we won't set a throughput limitation. This time we'll set an IOPS limitation and we'll do 1,000. We'll click Save. Again, we get to notice that that a change has been successful. And we'll go back and look inside our window system. And again, we can see we're at about 1,000 IOPS. So this gives you the ability to have great control over the performance within the volumes you create in an environment. So, so you could theoretically have a production volume work in conjunction with test and dev, and you could put a wrapper around the test and dev environment to make sure no runaway process, again, takes its lion's share of the storage solution. So I hope you've enjoyed this video, and please stay tuned for more videos.